team, and welcome back to the Best of Five podcast. I'm Claire. I'm Grant. And today we were honored uh, to have a current Penn State volleyballer, a former Nebraska volleyballer, Mm -hmm. Big Ten, soon-to-be legend. Yes. Caroline Juravicus. We have Caroline Caroline Juravicus. Let's get after it. Let's get after it. We had such a great time talking with her. Yes. Um, so nice. Very insightful. Mm-hmm. Um, she just gets it. She gets it. Yeah. She works hard. She grinds. Yeah. Um, She's around mm-hmm. a lot of people that grind. Um, her upbringing uh, really, like, formed her as a player and as a person. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Yeah. Let's dive in. went to Penn State school. We grew up like really big Penn State fans. Okay. Penn State volleyball specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but now we're, I mean, we're just like overall really big volleyball fans. So mm-hmm. we're very honored to have you um, on the podcast. Um, I'm happy just, to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, of course. Oh, a butterfly. Ooh. Cute. That was a hummingbird. That was a whole hummingbird. Oh, just like, oh my God. A whole... That's so weird because I just got a tattoo of one last week. That's well, so cool. Okay, that's actually really cool. <laughs> that's yeah. a great omen. Yeah, that's a sign. That's a that's really a good one. Yeah. Oh my okay. gosh, I love that. Good day. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and we can just jump right in. Um, okay. and when did you uh start playing volleyball? When did you know it was for you? When did you catch the bug? That sort of thing. Okay, so I started playing volleyball. Okay, I'm going to preface this by saying I. It's definitely not the most athletic kid growing up because I was just so tall always. Um, it took me a really okay. long time to go into my body. It was kind of brutal. But um, I started playing volleyball, actually, when my dad took me and my little sister to a Penn State women's volleyball game because he played football at Penn State. And he, said he was really good friends with Coach Rose. And um, so I kind of was just exposed to that world through Penn State volleyball. And I right. came back from that game, started going to a few camps, just a little, like, you know, just little kid club volleyball stuff. Um, right. And then I started playing club volleyball when I was 12 years old. And I was on, like, a regional team. It was uh, mm-hmm. nothing crazy. I just, I mean, and I wasn't even the best on the regional team. It was kind of <laughs> kind of brutal. And then uh, that season was over. And then I found out that there was an opening potentially at a, another club near me on okay. their second national team. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I could like try out for that. Yeah. And I make that team as their opposite. And then a girl on the first national team got hurt. Mm. So I went up, I got pulled up and as the second opposite on that team. And I was like, it was new to like that level of volleyball. Um, so, cause right, I played up right. a year too. I had to play up a year because of my birthday. Oh, okay, yes. I'm August 9th, so somehow it messes with the cutoff date. Oh, um, you're like right there. So I um playing a whole new level of volleyball. That was actually my first year like playing with the actual real volleyball and not a volley light. So I skipped that yeah. transition. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I had to figure that out real fast. Um, and then, you know, just started like kept training. Like, like I would get in for a few points here and there. And I remember there was this, it was the MEQ of my 14s year. Mm. all of a sudden i just started putting balls away nobody knew what had happened nobody (laughs) nobody knew and from then on i kind of rolled from there that's when i kind of caught it because i got my first yeah yeah, that was my first tournament that i actually really played and i got my first letter after that tournament wow wow that's awesome so you were 14 when that happened yeah i was 14 i'm pretty sure it was either I think Wake Forest and Purdue were on the same day. And I was, I remember exactly uh-huh. where I was. My dad called me. I was driving with my mom. And I remember <laughs> being like, Purdue? Like when he told me <laughs> that vividly. Yeah, just literally. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like Big Ten volleyball. Holy crap. Yeah. 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 Uh, what, what gave you that push to like push through, not necessarily being the most athletic or uh, like it clearly, like it took a while to pick up. So what helped you like dad. get through that? No, my dad. I yeah, cool. him to not all of my success because I know that I 
I worked, I worked and I had so many great coaches around me and so many great teammates. Mm. But my dad is, uh, he taught me how to work and he like, he played 11 years in the pro football league. He was just, he never stops working no matter what his business right now. And he taught me like, okay, you may not be great right now, but as long as you do the little things right every single day, those will add up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So he taught me that. We love that. Definitely taught me that lesson. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's definitely something that we try to, we coach uh, at our like high school and um, at our club. And like, I think I say that multiple times in practice. I'm like, if you do the little things, the hard things will come and it'll be like so much easier. But it's so hard for girls to see that when they're young and they're in it and, you know, the grind, the daily grind. And it's hard being being a kid you know like this is your first time on yeah. earth <laughs> um yeah. you don't know what's going on um but yeah. i think yeah that's really powerful to hear from someone as successful as you i um, think definitely like this analogy that always just kind of reminds me of my dad and what i grew up doing um it's just like you know those people that leave the grocery cart in the middle of the parking lot at the grocery store yeah yes yeah so it's like if you're too big to do the little things you're going to be too little to do the big things yeah. Wow. I, I love that. Always think about when I think of my dad. And I think he did a really good job of instilling that in me. Um, and that's gonna carry me far beyond volleyball, whatever I do career wise. I mean, that's just Absolutely. a way of life. Yes. So yeah, yeah. Thankful for yeah. him. I love that. That really yeah. like, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. That really clicked for me. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. Um, so if you wanna just give us a little bit of uh maybe like your recruiting journey um, yep. or like your your club. Did you play for AVC? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been seeing them on TikTok a lot lately. Um, They've been just up like, that grind. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so can you just talk about a little bit about your experience at AVC? Yeah, so I, AVC is the club that I switched over, over from. Um, I was at Eastside before, that was just a year. And I kind of just got my start for the basics there. And then competitively, mm-hmm. that was BC for me. Um, as I said, I played up a year and I had the greatest club teammates of all time. Sometimes oh, that's like horror stories about just like just so much drama and right. just mean girls. But I can mm-hmm. honestly say that my club experience was amazing because of this team. Um, so yeah, I started playing there. My I was 13 years old playing 14s. Um, and I was with them till my 18th season when they all graduated and I was just kind of left behind that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot from these girls. I learned a lot from that club and I am grateful for my time there. I started getting recruited like hardcore, um, my eighth grade year. That's when I started getting offers. Okay. Um, I think the two ones that are just kind of pivotal to my story i guess our penn state nebraska offered me my eighth grade year so i ended up going to a dream team camp for nebraska and i was about to commit on site in the eighth grade but my parents said absolutely not you're not doing that (laughs) yes a lot can change in those three formative years of high school to when i actually would commit my junior year so uh then the rules changed so then there was like a two year long dead yeah. period. So I'm just like going through, just sending film, just like, Hey, how's everything going? I'm yeah. out right. out cool. Just emails. Um, emails yeah. are key for those that are trying to get recruited, putting yourself okay. out there and having your name be recognizable in their inbox. Don't mm-hmm. spam them, but like put yourself out <laughs> yeah. there. Um, right. Keep them in the loop. Yeah. And then June, fe- June 15th, God, a uh, hit of my going into my junior year. And that was, a lot to take in. Um, I yeah. had probably seven or eight calls one day and then I divided it into the next day too. Wow. So I then started breaking out into stress hives because that's yeah. how my body likes to manifest stress apparently. Like it was all yeah, along right. here. So we go to oh nationals. We go to nationals and one of the coaches asked my like mom, like, is she okay? <laughs> oh no. Really, I was just like, I mean, like externally and how I carried myself with people, I was probably fine. I think I was, right. but I was yeah. just like tweaking out completely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
Then about a month later, I went to Dream Team Camp again, and then I ended up committing to Nebraska. It just felt like the right place to be at the time. And it was, it's such an amazing program with such an amazing history and what it's done for women in sports. It's fantastic. And I wanted to be a part of that. So I ended up committing to Nebraska exactly one month after June 15th. And there I was until December. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Um, And I mean, we can, uh, get into a little bit of that, you know, being a part of the, cause you graduated early, right? Yes. I graduated high school early. Okay. Yeah. And then you played beach, uh, beach. with them in spring 2023. Ball. Yes. Beach yeah. and, then ball, and then went through the regular season and I redshirted. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you like, you know, got the whole kind of Nebraska experience without, right. um, whole yeah and you were you were a part of the volleyball day in nebraska were you you were there with that that's yeah can you talk a little bit about that yeah for sure so actually i was in a lecture the other day at penn state and they were talking about women's in sports and industry and like they did walk out on the screen i'm like huh can't really escape it that's crazy it's literally (laughs) yeah for real everything that it did um just absolutely it's just absolutely amazing so yeah. My personal experience with that was I didn't find out I was redshirting until after that game. So uh, oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Little... um and then <laughs> <laughs> I think if you look at the grand scheme, so it took me a while to just kind of heal from that, um, from a more yeah, like sure. personal standpoint. Um yes. but uh, if you look at it from a great broader perspective and the fact that my mom was, my mom ran track at Princeton. So she was pretty close okay. after title nine and just the way yeah. that sports has completely progressed. Yeah. Um, right. And that much attention can be garnered for a women's volleyball game in the middle of Nebraska. Yeah. It's just yes. so impressive. And I think the thing that I'll never forget about that was definitely the flyover for the national right. anthem. That gets yeah. me every right. single time. Like, I don't know, yeah. something about flyovers and courtesy of the red, white, and blue just give me full body chills every single time. <laughs> yes. So, so great. But um, yeah, I think it was just an amazing experience getting to see how loud it was, but also how quiet at the same time. Right. Yeah. Right. It was surreal. Um, But yeah, and I'm so proud of every single one of my teammates that played that match and they gave everything they could and they showed up and showed out and did it for every girl that was watching so i'm super proud of my teammates for that yeah Yeah, that's so amazing that's awesome yeah and i mean like i know like you might not want to speak on it because it's still like a little fresh but um can you talk about like the process of redshirting and maybe like how that um affected your career yeah so i think at the time i was angry and it took me about two months to grieve what could have been or what I thought could have been and obviously if the universe thought I should have played and that would have been my path it wasn't so I think that I learned a lot about myself I got a lot mentally tougher and I became a better volleyball player just being in the gym with those girls because obviously it's a amazing program um I think that I also learned how to ask for help Mm. Um, and be open and vulnerable because my mental state at the time, I mean, it wasn't fantastic. So I started doing a lot of self-work. Like, why am I so upset over this? What do I expect from myself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really just getting to know the roots. I think that definitely helps me and ultimately learning when to pivot. And yes, this was meant for me at the time and it was the best decision for me at the time, but maybe it's time for me to move on because I'm meant to be elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, and then is that did you, and then that's whenever you sort of exactly. transition to Penn State. Yeah, that's when I uh, yeah. I made the decision to enter the portal the day after the national championship. So we uh, okay well, landed. Yeah. We landed in Lincoln on Monday. National championship was on Sunday. Have some coaches meetings, and then I hit the portal that night at like seven p.m. So okay. um, it was yeah. back to back to back. And then I took my Penn State visit on Wednesday and then committed on Thursday. So Wow. wow. Yeah. So it all awesome. happened pretty quick. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I like to get things done fast. So <laughs> we <did it. laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I wouldn't take back the red shirt actually. I and yeah. I can't believe I'm saying that. And I think that's just kind of signifies that there has been a lot of I mean, 
I've probably aged like 20 years within this past one season. Like it was. <laughs> no, was yeah, well. I'm sure. I wouldn't take back the red shirt for anything because it gives me an opportunity to start over at this school and I have four years left. Absolutely. And I already got, yeah. I got a ton of credits out of the way. I'm set to graduate okay. in 2026. So I get to get as much of a higher education as I possibly can. Well, yeah, I'm at yeah that's awesome. And I got to be in one of the greatest gyms in the United States and learn from that. Yeah. And right. no one could really take that away from me. So no. I met no, never. really great people, met some of my best friends, shout out Andy Jackson. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know, I learned, I grew, and I'm grateful for these next steps. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That is so awesome. Yeah. Because um, I like, I personally also like transferred schools um, yeah. whenever I was in the college process. And it took me a long time to get to that place where it's like, okay, this was the decision I made at the time. And this was right for me at the time. Yeah. But now it's time to pivot and it's okay mm -hmm. to have to make a change, but like change is scary. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the times like, that can hold you back but you know it's really inspiring to see um yeah that if you're if things need to change and you can be thankful for what you have but also want more yeah. for sure yeah so i'm very very grateful and i'm grateful that i learned that it's okay to change and it's okay to move on when things aren't necessarily serving you anymore because you'll end up where you're supposed to be yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome um, whenever you were transferring, was it always Penn State that you had in mind or were you thinking about other things? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. My um Instagram post for my commitment, there if you like slide slide and then the next post it's a picture of me and my little sister in Rec Hall when we're like, oh. I don't know, like eight and six. Yeah. I don't we're, yeah. we're little. But it's just right. I remember my iPad mini lock screen was a picture of Haley Washington and oh my God. Yes. yes. I was a Penn State volleyball girl through and through growing up. Absolutely. And yeah. I kind of always knew in the back of my mind that that's where I'm supposed to be. And right. on my, when Nebraska played Penn State um, at Rec Hall, I, we went were to, there. Mm -hmm, I went to go get coffee with my one friend who I went to high school with, and she's just a regular student at Penn State. Um, okay. I went to go get coffee, and I was just walking around, and I'm just kind of like, okay this is just like it feels right. it feels great so yeah. um yeah. i don't know i kind of always knew that penn state was the place i was going to end up when i decided that i was going to end up pivoting yeah. right exactly yeah and i mean they call it happy valley for a reason yeah. you know <laughs> sure. they're not messing around no right. yeah no, yeah, exactly. We were we were at that game in Rec Hall. We like got there kind of late, and so we were standing like up on the track. Room. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and it it was so cool. Yeah, yeah it was so fun. Um, no, that was an amazing. Yeah. Event. Yes, it was it was ridiculous. Um, do you? Yeah, I I have a question. I you mentioned Title Nine a little bit ago, and it just like kind of got stuck in my head how th this one right here, Claire has some good info on like exactly the statistics but after title nine the numbers of male coaches coaching women's sports like shot up like crazy yeah and um i was wondering like if, if you've noticed any differences any benefits any negatives to um like playing for a woman now that you're playing for coach katie yeah, yeah i think um again nothing re but respect for any coach i've ever had in my of entire course. life yeah so I think that playing for Katie is an amazing experience. I've known Katie for a really long time, too. She went to college with my dad. Oh. So oh, wow. it, all nice. times, it all comes back. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that she, she did it. And she did it exactly at that same school. And she, the program that she's building right now is aiming to restore something, you know, that she yeah. had part in. And she there's this pride associated with it. Like yeah. she played for that. Mm -hmm. It's not like she coached for that school before. Cause she couldn't, she like physically couldn't be on the women's volleyball team, but she did it and she knows right. what it takes. So I think that there is kind of something personal about that. Yeah, yeah like, definitely. Like, yeah. Right. I think that's kind of what I, what I think of when I think of that. And uh, 
she also gets it. I mean, she mm-hmm. she's a young woman in co- she was a young woman in college, like same as we all were. She's been there and done that. So she like anything yeah. you come to her with, like again, been there, done that. So she yeah. uh, is very very relatable, and I love being coached by her. I think she's just an amazing person. She's a great role model, and I'm excited to see what she builds over the next couple of years. Yeah, that's awesome, and you'll be able to get to be a part yeah. of it for the yeah. next four. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because like one of the stats like that he's talking about was like after title like before Title Nine, it was like ninety percent of women's sports were coached by women, and then after Title Nine, it completely switched. So like ten percent were coached by women and ninety percent by men because huh. of the because of the funding that was um, like the NCAA was established and schools were getting funding to p- actually pay coaches now. So they were like, oh, well, we're going to put in our buddies, you know, in, you know, who used to be football coaches or who used to be, you know, whatever. And so, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really crazy. And that's something that like, we're trying to really like bring awareness to. And wow. like, I never, yeah. I never knew that. That's yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It's actually wild. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was just like, I kind of like stumbled upon it because I was doing research for my, like I was my, uh, my thesis or whatever in college, like I did it on title nine. Um, and then I worked, I interned for voice in sport, um, which is like an online platform. That's pretty cool. And is all about elevating women's voices and women's athletes. Um, so yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's, that was kind of a tangent, but, um, (laughs) our little spiel. (laughs) Yeah. Our little spiel. Um, so we want to kind of go forward and like, what are your goals, um, at Penn state? What do you, what do you hope to achieve this spring and this fall, but then also, um, just going forward to your whole career? Yeah. Um, so I think what we do right now, what we've been doing since January, as far as lifting is concerned and what we do in the gym and how seriously we take our reps, that obviously translates to August and in turn that translates to December. So if you set set a standard right now that i mean doing the little things now it kind of just it always goes back to that but um, yes yeah so i think what we do right now definitely sets the uh stage for what we are capable of doing in regular season and i Mm -hmm. am so thankful for the team for being so welcoming to me and maggie who also came to Nebraska. um and everything it's been pretty seamless and I'm very awesome. grateful for that. And these girls work. That's one thing. Um, mm-hmm. I was talking to my dad about this the other day. I was walking to class and I called him and I'm like, the th- crazy thing is, dad, like these girls work like I've never seen a team work before. Wow. Mm-hmm. And yeah. again, I'm very grateful to be a part of that. And I think that's something that is what Penn State volleyball is. Like, uh, yes. if, you talk, if you talk to any of these girls that played in like the uh, early 2010s dynasty team, like yes they they know what it takes and they were grinders and i think that through keeping that mindset and making sure that we just stay on that path that we can do some really really great things as a team yeah for sure we've we've learned from a couple of those 2010 girls um kalina davidson she uh yeah played and then coached uh she comes to she used to come to our high school and do camps for us Mm -hmm. um so yeah, that was really awesome. And to just like kind of get a little behind the scenes of what you guys do and, yeah. you know, because it takes work to be successful. And I think a lot of the times people overlook that where they think that, you know, talent can beat hard work, but at the end of the day, it never will. That's never how it works. But <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, going deep into the postseason is definitely a collective team goal this year. Um, yes. And then personally, I think it's just kind of establishing myself on the NCAA stage and mm-hmm. kind of just showing like, okay, like took a year off and here we are. Let's see what I can do now. So right. um, exactly. yeah, my goal, my goal is to really just is do as much as I can and work as hard as I possibly can for these girls and to get Penn State back to where it should be. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That. Yeah, we love that, especially as Penn State fans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for sure. Do you want to ask about her walk-on song? Oh, uh, we we just like to ask to like try and get the vibe. If there was no copyright issue issues, we didn't have to worry <laughs> about that at all. What would your like walk-on song be? Oh my God, "Get Low" by Lil John. 
<laughs> that's a great <laughs> response. Oh, that's such a good song. If that could be my anthem without it being censored every other word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Good. Master. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's a great response. That's awesome. Oh, I would okay. I have I remember a question. Um so you said that you and Maggie both transferred um in together. Has that been nice having someone that also you have um is like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. T yeah. Talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so Maggie and I, we met playing USA. We were both on the U18 national team down in Durango, Mexico. Mm. So okay, that's cool. where we kind of just met and got acquainted with each other. And then we both ended up going to Nebraska. She, uh, our lockers were right next to each other, but we weren't like, we were friendly. We weren't necessarily always right. the closest. And then mm -hmm. we both hit the portal and we're just kind of like, okay, where do we go from here? I ended up yeah. going to Penn State, and then she committed a week or two after me, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, I think having somebody that knows what it was like at the prior school is amazing. Somebody that yes. knows you and you have a little bit of history with is mm -hmm. great. And yes. she's just all around an amazing person. She works. As I said, she works. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I am so grateful that she is with me and we have gotten so close. I mean, she's my roommate. Like, we're both on the bottom oh, floor of our house. So it's just kind of wandering over into her room every night, lying on her yeah. bed. Oh, <laughs> yes. What's going on? <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so I, it's, it's so great. It's so great because you can talk and you can like debrief, like, what do I need to do? And she's not afraid to tell right. me what I need to do to be better. And I'm not afraid to tell her what to do to be better. Yeah. yeah. So I think through having those open and honest conversations with someone you trust and someone you've known is super great. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think that. I mean, I'm probably I'm sure that is su such great support. And you yeah. know, yeah, you guys just know without even having to really talk about what the experience was. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk about um, the new. Uh, NCAA eliminated the double rule. Um, how yeah. do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I could have stayed a setter for a lot longer of the time. If <laughs> I was a setter when I was 12. I was a setter right side. Okay. Like a little three. Uh, yeah. 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 I, it's two. like 12's volleyball. You know what happens in 12's volleyball. Which oh is my like gosh. No yes. what happens in 12's volleyball. <laughs> Nothing no. happens. Nothing. No. <laughs> It just is what it is. But um, yeah. my personal opinion is that, you know what? I've seen so many people talk about this. It's like, I think it takes away from the fact that setting is an art. Mm -hmm. And I personally am not the biggest fan of it. I, again, I'm very close with Bergen Riley back at Nebraska. I'm friends with Ella right. Swindle down at Texas. And I okay, know how yeah. hard these girls have worked to just get their hands. So I think it takes away some of yeah. the credibility of what they do and yeah. the cleanliness of the sport. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think that it's right. uh, kind of disrespectful to everything that they've done. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. It is kind of, you know, taking a shit on their chest. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Like, what have I, like that one TikTok sound where it's like all that work and what if, what does it get me or something like that? Yeah. I've seen yes. so yeah. many TikToks with that sound about the double rule. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. many. I don't love it. Yeah. I just think it's going to be interesting to see, like, when a double happens, like, teams continuing to play through that, you know? Because so often it's, like, double and everybody stands up and stops. Yeah. Where, like, now people are, like, you're going to have to play through that. And I think that's going to be a little bit of a mind, uh, mind fuck, if that, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the right word. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, like, and also, like, the location's obviously going to be off if you're setting so that's just like it's yes. not for the hitters it's not the most fun thing in the entire world because usually yeah. like you stop doubles call you stop now you have to just track that like it's going 30 feet behind you but you're yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah that is going to be very hard for the hitters to track yeah yeah it it is what it is you can't really go back and change that because a bunch of people no. are bitching about it on tiktok but yeah. right exactly yeah. it is what it is yeah and you're right like the cleanliness of the sport for me, at least, is, like, what keeps me watching, what keeps me yeah. playing. Is be like, I want to be as clean as I can. I want to watch clean volleyball. Mm -hmm. um, 
And honestly, that's kind of why I have a hard time watching men's volleyball because it's just like wailing the ball at each other. <laughs> no, you know? it's like, yeah, yes. kind of just pray that it goes down. Yeah, no, literally. Yeah. yeah, and there's like no fundamentals, but hey, whatever. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Get the, <you> back. <laughs> the Penn State men's volleyball team is going on right now. They're having a pretty good season. Do you have you yeah. like watched any games? Do you? Yeah, uh, I've been to a few. Um, the volleyball teams are pretty close this year, so I think that's really great. Uh, um, yeah, I know they're out in California. I'm in California right now. I'm in Palm Springs, but um, oh, so they're about two hours west of me right now, doing that's what they do. It. Yeah, I think their yeah. uh, their ranking reflects how hard they've worked right now, Fourth and point. yeah, I think they're doing a great job this year. I've been to a few games in person um, when they're just home at rec, so that's just yeah. I mean, it's convenient. You walk in from our locker room and you're right there. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think they're doing right, some pretty great. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh yeah. I don't know if you know him, but one of my first ever club teammates, Will Coons, is no currently way. playing. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. We played together when we were like twelve. <laughs> I like on team. No, they're all great. Yeah. yeah. He's a great guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. We don't want to hold you too long. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we could talk Penn State volleyball and volleyball forever. Yeah. So we don't wanna uh take up too much of your time. Um but yeah, we're really excited to see you in uh, Rec Hall, and we'll be we'll definitely be cheering you on. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And guys. I'm sure, yeah, of course. And I'm sure we'll we'll be at a couple games. Oh, um, for sure. We're hoping to come to the because we're we live in Pittsburgh, um, yeah. so we're hoping to come to like the Pitt Penn State spring matches. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, yeah. yeah. So we'll definitely see you there. Hopefully, we coach clubs, so we have to see our club schedule. It's a nightmare. Um, have fun with that. It's, <laughs> oh my god yeah, it is. um so yeah <laughs> um <laughs> exactly but we just want to thank you again for um recording with us and being on the show um and we wish you the best of luck in happy valley thank you so much thank you guys for having me on this was great yeah yes, of course thank you, thank you have a great day guys you, you too, too. Thanks for watching or listening. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching or listening to the best of five pod. We want to give a special thanks to Caroline for coming on the podcast again. Be sure to watch her this fall in blue and white. She's going to tear up the big 10. Um, please remember to also like subscribe, follow mm -hmm. the best of five podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, just click buttons, click buttons, please leave reviews, rate it. Um, we want to hear back from you. Exactly. Who should we have on next? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just be sure to show your support. Um, every like and every uh, interaction counts. So thank you and we'll see you next week.